All right, you guys. Well, thanks for tuning in today. If you are subscribed to Happy Hour here at the Heidi St. John podcast, you're in for a double treat today because Dr. Mark and I have been uh, cutting a rug in the pre-show today talking about the political landscape. So we're going to be kind of giving some post-debate analysis. So if you are interested in hearing uh, that, you're going to want to subscribe to Happy Hour, and you can do that by becoming a subscriber over at Spotify. All right, I'm not going to waste any more time. My friend, Dr. Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's always good to see you. You know, uh, we had some really good times pre live today, so I'm really excited yes. about the happy hour for the folks, but I'm also excited about the wonderful questions we have to answer as well. Yeah, we've been getting really, really great questions. And for those of you who are like, hey, how are those questions getting to uh, Dr. Merck and Heidi? First of all, if you are a VIP, or in other words, if you subscribe to the show, your questions will always be answered first on the list. And second of all, you can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday, and that's where to leave your questions uh, for Dr. Mark or for myself or a comment that you want to do. That's the way to do it. All right. You ready to jump in? Of course. I'm ready to roll. Fire away. All right. I want to I want to start with this one because it's it's kind of provocative. And you know me. I'm just like, let's jump into the, you know, let's jump into the deep end no. here. Karen in Ohio has been hearing, and I'm sure you've been hearing too, that Father Fauci, the high priest of the Branch Covidians, oh. is <laughs> hinting that lockdowns may be in our future. And we're watching this is happening in the news. Some universities bringing back mask mandates, that kind of thing, which gives me a shiver up, up, up my spine for sure. And Karen in Ohio is asking what you recommend that we have on hand to support our health. Should there be any future pandemic lockdowns? Now, I know you're gonna have a lot to say. So I just want to jump right out of the gate and say, I'm just telling everybody, do not comply. Yeah. I, I, I refuse to be locked down again. I, I absolutely refuse. So I'm not going to do it. But let's say we want to be ready to just not lose our minds. What do you say to Karen in Ohio? Well, Karen, I appreciate that thought because ultimately, you know, I've been asked that question probably two dozen times this week alone. No kidding. Uh, people are here. People are scared. Yeah, they are. And so here's the thing. Yeah. Well, let me just. Karen, I just want you to understand that we as um, Christian folks should operate in facts, faith, and truth. Now, Come so on. far, it is just rumors. So what are we supposed to do with rumors? We're supposed to put that in the context of the Proverbs. I think it's 1821. The first to present a case seems right until he's questioned by witnesses. So just know that rumors are nothing more than loud, clanging symbols at this point. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to occur. I'm saying to don't overreact, but respond mm. when accordingly. So operate in, instead of in fear and, um, you know, rumors, mm. operate in fact, faith, and truth. And I, I think we'll respond better at that point because we know yeah. that fear does not do us uh, justice and that serves us well with the immune system. It weakens us, right? So, boy, that's true. Yeah. So, Karen, here's the thing you know, if we go there, if it happens, and, and again, again, I've seen no concrete global or even countrywide, you know, thing that's going to. But I've heard the same rumors and seen the same things you mentioned, yeah. Heidi. Um, yeah, you know, Karen. So you got to prepare yourself, and, and this is what I recommend: don't freak out. Obviously, if you, you know, are in that position, I encourage you to not. And I use the word comply. Don't comply. And this is important. If there's pastors that are listening now, now I'm speaking to you seriously with from my heart right now. If you are a real pastor and not just a a person that's got a building and a business, if you are a real pastor and you really have a call of God, you need to understand that the government has no authority over you. If you close your businesses down, if you close your your church down at this point, you will have failed the call of God in your life. I can't be more serious than that. First time yep. it happened, shame on them. Second time it yep. happened, shame on us. You yep. cannot close down. And Karen, if you're at a church, hear me, and, and that church tries to get you to close down, find a new church because you're not at a church, you're at a business. So Come go on. somewhere else. And so I can't be more passionate about that. Heidi, we can't blow it this time. We've had this... Um, uh, provocative awareness of truth. Yeah. From this point forward, we cannot be fooled anymore. Now, if we don't comply this time, 
I believe with all of my heart to give people some hope, we will salvage what we have left of the hope of the Constitutional Republic and the way America is supposed to stand up. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that that, that segues into, and, I, and uh, this is just me asking, because you and I talked about this before, uh, during uh, the Rona, what, are, what is the efficacy <laughs> of masks? Right. We talked a whole lot about they don't protect you against a virus. So at this point, they're just it's a control mechanism. But can you talk to listeners from a from a scientific point of view as to why you remain so opposed to an ID2 mask wearing? Yeah, let's be common sense, folks. I and mean, the mask say right on the package, just read it. They will not protect right. the environment. You know, they won't. There's an idea. Yeah, just like read the instructions. <laughs> right. You know, don't right. don't trust. And, and even seriously, don't trust what I'm saying. Verify yeah. what I'm saying. So look at the packages on the mask, and it'll tell you it won't protect from viruses because the particles of the viruses, those nanoparticles, Too small. Go right through there. It's like almost having a chain link fence trying to protect yourself from mosquitoes. It won't work. Second part of that is the body is designed to expel or exhale, exhale carbon dioxide, which is a waste product, right? So if the body can't expel that appropriately and it gets caught up in that mask, the moisturization of your breath will catch in that mask and it will create a moisture buildup in that mask. And how do you clean a table? You wet a cloth and wipe the table down. Think about the molecular garbage that you're going to accumulate right up there in your mouth and nasal area, and you're going to breathe it in. So the mask don't work. Now, on the, you know, on the offhand, you're sick and you're coughing and spewing all over the place and you, you know, you're contagious and you go, I got to go to the grocery store and I don't want to infect anybody else. If you want to wear a mask while you go to the grocery store in that isolated condition, you know what I'm talking about, go ahead. But as far as a preventing mechanism, forget it. They're not going to work. Yeah. And, you know, I have a friend who's a dentist right here in uh, in Washington State, and he was saying that after the forced masking, especially of children, they saw an incredible uptick in a dental uh, in yeah. tooth decay. And he yep. was saying it's the same thing. We're just we're recycling all of our germs and everything instead of expelling it. We're breathing it back in. And he said, this is so damaging. It's so devastating. And I am sorry, but shame on these people yeah. who claim to be doctors who actually know that what they're saying isn't true and they're using it to scare people. And I'm watching the, this little slow but surely this little uptick in mask wearing again here in Washington State. And people are terrified and we've got to stop being afraid, like what you were saying a few mm -hmm. minutes ago, and start operating again in common sense. Yeah, common sense is gone, um, unfortunately, yeah. when you don't critically think. Um, you know, I've been on a lot of uh, broadcasts about this idea of critically thinking. Folks, just think through this, please. Stop yeah. and really analyze. Anytime you have an issue, look at both sides of it and then really make a good decision. Don't be yeah. polarized on one side, because when you do, you're probably going to make a bad decision. And the last thing I'll say about mask, Heidi, is because the majority of communication is not done um, verbally. It's done non-verbally. Oh, yeah. You deal with the homeschooling issue. You cannot, as a teacher uh, and a parent, communication with a child when their mouth is covered. That That mm -hmm. is like so sad because it obliterates the ability to communicate effectively because we need to see expression. I, I want to see a child smile, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. You guys do not do this again. Whatever happens next, uh, do not comply. You know, I agree with you, uh, Dr. Mark fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. And uh, we know now that the, the vaccines have been devastating in their, uh, in, in both the lack of efficacy and the harm that have yeah. been caused that's been caused because they weren't tested. No. I mean, let's just be, let's just be honest. We just rushed that thing to market yeah. and uh, we need to be, we need to be better than this in terms of just doing our homework and not living in fear. I appreciate your voice so much on this. Kelsey in Idaho, uh, you pointed this out to me earlier today that so this is such a great question. She says for uh, Dr. Mark, my son was diagnosed with benign Rolandic. Is that how you say the epilepsy mm -hmm. at four? He's eight now, and we've been through two different types of seizure medications, and he still doesn't go more than a few months without a breakthrough seizure. The doctors don't want to take him off medication until he can go two years seizure-free. They believe he'll grow out of this disorder by adolescence. What supplements can we add to help him 
and help protect his brain? Well, Kelsey, that's a great question because I've got a a resource for you. I want you to get the book Ketogenic Bible, Ketogenic Bible. Um, I don't recommend things unless I know it would provide great benefit to you. The ketogenic um, diet done properly was used 100 years ago to treat epilepsy and all the various types with great efficacy to reduce the frequency and severity of those particular uh, episodes. And I think it's very, very good, Kelsey, right now for you to believe again that not only can your child grow out of this, but maybe be corrected and healed from it. So I want you to have a different mindset, right? So again, think ketogenic. Um, Again, that's going to be like a a lot of above ground non-root vegetables. And it's going to be, you know. Wait, wait, it's not just bacon? No. I heard that it was just bacon. Please don't do the bacon Sausage, <laughs> cheese, casserole. And think of that is like, oh, come on. You know, come like on. You're ruining time, it for yeah. me. <laughs> let me let me see how we can clog our arteries. That's I call that the Americanized version of ketogenesis. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really, because yeah. you said this before, I think it's really important because when people hear keto. Yeah. They think sausage and bacon <laughs> and bacon grease. And, you know, they do. Yeah. What is the what is the true? I mean, that's what I thought. Yeah. I mean, come on. I was like, I could be you could sell me on that. Oh, yeah. I eat burgers uh, all the time. Right. 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 Just the it's the, you know, the burger without the bun. That's right. But what is a true ketogenic diet? True ketogenic diet is an abundance of vegetables that grow above the ground that don't elevate blood sugar. In other words, they're low glycemic. Think um, kale and spinach, arugula broccoli, asparagus, that kind of stuff. It's an abundance broccoli. of Broccoli. Your fats necessarily come from avocados, which is a fruit, raw nuts and seeds. And then you have a smaller amount of protein, which typically comes from fish, right? So a true ketogenic diet would have, you know, a good amount of those above ground vegetables, a good amount of those nuts and seeds raw, and that's very important because we don't want them bathed in those um, uh, burned seed oils, right? We don't want the roast. Can you? Okay, I have a question. Yeah. So I am allergic to raw. Like the, I could have a roasted almond, but you give me a raw almond, and I'm having I'm having trouble. It's the same with you know pumpkin seeds. I can't even eat raw apples anymore because my body just can't do it. Uh, what do you do? I mean, what do I do? Somebody like me who can't do the raw nut, but I could do roast. I could roast my own, right? Maybe yeah. buy them raw and then do do my own, stick them in the oven. If they're roasted with like things like macadamia oil or olive oil or avocado oil, fine. But the majority of those nuts and seeds are roasted with uh, canola, sunflower. Ooh, and that's and, bad for you. Yeah, they bad, bad. Burn up and create eh. a problem. But honestly, with... um, You know, our situation now, if we'll do the proper ketogenic diet and that... Look, it works for epilepsy, but here's the good news. That diet has been used globally for 100 years to reverse even type 2 diabetes. So there's a great benefit to that around the, you know, across the board. Wow. Okay, that's good advice. I'm taking notes really fast, and I don't even have epilepsy, but that was really good. All right. Uh, so here's a question about Hashimoto's from Elizabeth in Iowa. She said in a recent podcast with Dr. Mark, there was some discussion about thyroid health. And he mentioned that Hashimoto's can be healed. What does he recommend to help this process happen? I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's during my fourth pregnancy last winter, but have struggled with symptoms, primarily food sensitivities, for several years. I want to be able to feel like I'm getting enough nutrition to have the energy I need with four kids under six and breastfeeding. Thank you so much, Heidi, for being a resource for so many things in life. Thanks, Elizabeth. All right, Dr. Mark, what say you? Well, Elizabeth, first of all, thanks for being a good mama. I mean, mother of four yes. and six, you are, you are working for a living, let me just say. She did. <laughs> yeah, Thank right. you for that. That's you know. right. She's getting it done. Yeah, I honor you for that. So, Elizabeth, here's the thing. So, you mentioned something very key. There's a tie between food and Hashimoto's. What you have is you have leaky gut. Leaky gut is caused by predominantly the bombardment in everybody of gluten-containing uh, foods, processed foods, high-processed sugars, and things like that. It creates permeability in your small intestine, and it allows these proteins to leak across, creating multiple food sensitivities. When the proteins leak across that barrier into your bloodstream, your immune system is regulated, and many times it will create what's called molecular mimicry, meaning that your body will begin to attack proteins that look like tissues and organs. In your case... They are creating antibodies to thyro, 
globulin and thyroperoxidase antibodies. So when you see those antibodies elevated, you have to shut off the leaky gut process. So you want to look at like maybe a dietary antigen test to find out what foods are really, really causing you problems right now. We can help you with that. And then heal up the gut. Once you heal up the gut, you will see those antibodies go down and you'll see the thyroid process of Hashimoto's be reversed. Now, in the meantime, you may, depending on how severe it is, you may have to take a natural thyroid sort of a product to support it, such as one that would contain glutathione, selenium, and maybe iodine. And maybe if it's severe, you may have to take more of a natural um, porcine source thyroid, such as NP or armor thyroid for a time. All right. Now, I, this is an interesting question. Brittany in Pennsylvania, <laughs> she said she wants to know how to get her child and her husband to sleep with their mouth closed. Well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I hear I hear a little bit of I hear a little frustration. Yeah, kind of maybe just a little. It sounds like maybe your husband might be snoring. I'm not inferring that. <laughs> but hey, Brittany, here's <laughs> oh, the thing. Oh, no, no. You know, don't. I'm going to tell you what not to do. Don't stick a sock in their mouth. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> be a bad deal. <laughs> and, and don't put tape over their mouth. Actually, no. there is a book out there called Breath or Breathe, however you want to say it. But it's actually talking about the efficacy of more or less nose breathing while you sleep. And in that book, believe it or not, they recommend taking a little tiny thin, I recommend thin, let me say that again, thin piece of tape <laughs> to go right here from this peak of the bridge of your lips, cross and down towards your mouth to sort of close that airway partially where you can kind of breathe out of the side, but you're not opening. Your so he's talking, for those of you who are not watching yeah. this, he's talking vertically, not vertically. horizontally. Vertical taping, not <laughs> horizontal taping. Yeah. And don't do that <laughs> until you read the book. And don't do that to a child. And if your husband chooses to do that, let him do that. But don't do that to him. <laughs> yeah, I just want to call just off the, all that. That's important. Just, just get the, just get the book. Okay, yeah. just get get the book. Uh, that might be the the way to the way to. Get yeah, people say it. Dr. Yeah. Mark said to tape my mouth shut. No, I didn't say that yeah. at all. No, no, no. Hey, man. Although there are some circumstances in this way, this might be an appropriate an appropriate course of action. Yeah. But that's it might help. That might be that might be the yeah. after show today. <laughs> True, that might be the after hours time. You know. <laughs> all right, one more question, Moran in Indiana has a question for you. She says she suffers from what she believes is carpal tunnel. I'm only 31. I've been to the chiropractors, but it doesn't seem to help. I grew up helping my dad mow and weed eat for his business at the age of 10. And I've also been a bank teller for years. And now I've got my own business making jewelry. I love to work with my hands, but I'm so tired of the pain. It's gotten much worse. Can you help? Any advice? Thank you. And she loves the show. She says, thank you for coming on. Well, it's an honor. And thank you for your kind words so very much. But here's the thing with carpal tunnel, repetitive movements is the actual instigator of that. So actually the vibration part of that actually does create that tendency to create that more. So the weed eating stuff, you know, I think if you can over time, just try to minimize that. Uh, try to minimize sleeping upon your hands where the, you don't get circulation there. That's a good tip. And certainly yep, yep. Uh, try to minimize the repetitive action of the hands and keep your hands more of in a neutral position instead of like, if you can't see the broadcast, the, the wrist turn upwards towards the face. In that manner, we put that uh, constriction on that particular, um, you know, joint right there. And that creates a problem. So just make sure that you... You, you don't try to repeat the repetitive motions and kind of break that cycle. Yeah. So you're saying, you know, keep keep that wrist in a neutral position yes, yes. whenever possible. What do you think about having her sleep with like a brace that you get at the, you know, your Walgreens? Hey, that's a good idea, you know, because ultimately you don't want to create that tension right there. Because even while you sleep, I mean, that's hopefully eight hours of sleep, but that's eight hours of more, um, you know, tension on that place. And think about this too, you know, the greatest thing we can do is allow circulatory action to occur in anywhere because oxygen uh, creates healing. You know, the life is in the blood, so to speak. Yeah, that's good advice. I know that for me, you know, I tend to, I, I sense some sort of sleep like this. Yeah. I think a lot of women do that. And so uh, that's fantastic. All right. That is all we have time for today. Dr. Mark, you're going to stick around and we are going to uh, 
We're going to talk about the debates that were just happening because we were talking about this for a minute before the show. And I was like, man, that was good. Yeah. What you said was so good. So stick around if you're subscribed to the show. We're spending the next couple of minutes just talking a little bit about some debate analysis and kind of what's going on in the uh, the Republican primaries. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great conversation for everybody else. Thank you guys so much for listening. We sure love you. Please get your questions to us by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. And you can find out more about uh, Dr. Sherwood and his beautiful wife, Michelle, and their practice by going to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. And uh, one more thing, Kingdom Candy. Oh, yeah. So update on that one. I've, um, I want to. Yeah. My all my listeners are like, hey, I'm going there. Where's the Kingdom Candy? No, it's Where is it's it, on back order right now. We actually have. Get this. Because Heidi ordered way too. Yeah, first thing on Heidi St. John. Yeah, right. So we have <laughs> 35,000 bars coming to us in about three weeks or less. So they're on target. We should have a couple different flavors. We'll have our conventional flavor, the original one, but we also have another caramel crunch. So that's coming. So Ooh. check that out. And then finally, uh, people need to know right here, first thing. We've got actually Kingdom Crunch. It's a cereal coming. It's meant to be a trail mix that can be a dry or one that can be uh, bathed, if you will, in unsweetened almond milk. So that's coming up soon. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay, so that question was from Janita. She's a vip -er and she was like, hey, uh, I'm trying to get Kingdom Candy. I can't get it. And you guys know I love this stuff. Oh. Uh, Mark sent some to me, and I'm like, this is fantastic. Yeah. And so we're excited. So you guys just keep watching for that. And if you want to order it, uh, check back on your calendars in about three weeks. Again, that's uh, Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. We appreciate it when you guys use that link. It helps me and it lets Dr. Mark know that you guys heard about him on the show. Dr. Mark Sherwood, you're a national treasure. Uh, thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody else, we will see you back here again after the weekend. And for those of you who are subscribed, it's just stick around because you're going to get to listen to Dr. Mark Sherwood and Heidi St. John talk about the presidential debates. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture.